Hi guys, welcome back to Down Under and South of the Border, a show about expat living, teaching English as a foreign language, travel, love, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, this episode, we're going to start talking about Burning Man, the experience. So, let's get started, shall we? Now, the camp was set up, and it was day one of the festival proper. Uh, the gates had opened and all the Sun Guardians had rocked up. The first day or so, I spent mostly just hanging around the camp, getting to know people, just hanging around, hanging around the neighborhood where we were. Um, lots of fun things to do there, obviously. Uh, checked out Celestial Bodies, great camp just nearby. So we a mean Playa Cosmo. Uh, that's the drink of choice on, on at Black Rock City. It's a uh, Vodka and powdered Gatorade, good stuff, and ice. Um, keeps you going, keeps you, keeps you going. Make sure you bring your cup and an ID, of course. It was a great first day. We got to meet all my campmates. It's a privilege to hang out with and get to know these wonderful people. So many fun memories. So much love for these wonderful, wonderful people. I don't get to talk to enough online or see in real life, obviously, being on the wrong side of the world, but hopefully next year. After Celestial Bodies, we uh, checked out Tectonic for the first time, and that was pretty cool. Um, really, really cool, actually. Uh, it's kind of like a house, electro, techno kind of camp. The giant flamethrower um, was right on our kind of avenue, so it was a great landmark to find home. Um, that night, um, the, one of the DJs was kind of like using like a Nintendo controller to do the music and do the flamethrower. It was, it was so rad. It was so rad. Of course, I was joined by my good friend uh, Molly that night. She's a hell of a gal. And uh, so most things were pretty rad at that point. Um, yeah. Just a note, like Burning Man isn't the... Uh, sexually uninhibited drug fest that it's sometimes portrayed to be. Um, for every raver that's chewing up his face, there's a techno ascetic, uh, abstinent techno llama that's um, you know, going around the place distributing arms. Um, it can be what you want it to be. Um, um, so for some people, entheogens or party supplements are part of their journey there. For others, not. For some, it being very um, exploring their sexuality is part of the experience. For others, not. For me, uh, for my Burning Man experience, the hedonistic, not so much hedonistic, but the Sex positive, um, free spirited nature of sex at Burning Man was part of my experience. Uh, it was my swan song, as it turned out to be, to single life. Uh, that night I discovered the sex scent at Comfort and Joy. Oh my god, it would be my home away from home on Playa. Uh, it's a beautiful, open, colourful, light environment. Who are there to see and be seen. Um, I broke a few personal bests and invented a few things, I think. <sighs> I made the internet look tame. <sighs> if I suddenly woke up and I was in that tent, I'd know I'd died and gone to heaven. Just as if I suddenly woke up and I was in Ikea, I'd know I'd died and gone to hell. That's how wondrous wonderful little place was. Oh, it's beautiful. Ah, precious memories. When I wasn't in the sex tent, uh, I was out exploring the playa. There's all kinds of workshops and performances and experiences to be had. Uh, people to meet. Um, there's bars, there's, there's chill out spaces, there's art pieces, there's art cars, there's just people to talk to oh all over the playa. Um, you can't see it all, but you have to try. God, you have to try. You can't sleep, you can't do anything. You can't miss anything. Uh, for instance, uh, 
around the, the beginning of my time, there was a slave and master auction. Um, and me and a, a few of my other fellow Sun Guardians sounded, thought it sounded kinky as fuck and uh, right up our respective alleys. So we thought we'd check it out. So I think it was Tuesday, we made our way to the slave and master auction and uh, oh, so many hot slaves and masters there. But what to be? Obviously I was going to be a slave. Um, the slaves got spritz and got fed peeled grapes and little drinks and little bits and pieces. It's bliss. Um, obviously showering is kind of difficult on plier, so a spritz is better than nothing. I think I had two showers the entire time. We had a showering camp, but it didn't work all the time and we had issues with our um, wastewater disposal. Uh, so shower just being wet just kind of makes you kind of luggy and muddy. So it's best just to avoid the whole thing. Everyone's stinky, no one cares. The auction begun. The slave has all the power, said the auctioneer. Uh, so it was, what, how it worked was the masters bid on the slaves and it was up to the slave to decide what bid he was going to take or she um, for uh, to be accepted by the master and what they were comfortable in doing for said bid uh, and the bids were good like there were things like getting a um, plane ride from above the plier um, there were all kinds of amazing things and I'm um, looking at these guys and I know, I know, it was very unburning man spirited of me, but I was looking at some of the guys and seeing what they were getting offered and thinking, bitch please, what have I got coming? And um, I don't know, you guys might have noticed already that when I rehearse lines, uh, I don't do too well, they're a bit forced. Um, but when I'm kind of a bit more natural, things kind of go a bit better. Um, but I think in my mind, I do very, very well when I rehearse lines. Uh, I rehearse lines and I was like, you know, they ask you what your special skill is. And I was like, I have virtually no gag reflex to speak of, which is true. Um, yeah, it kind of crickets, crickets, oh, a few mild laughs and um, I did a little, uh, <laughs> Elaine dance. Um, I don't know, it was real awkward. And, um, that's part of my charm. Anyway, uh, it seemed like I was there for the longest time. And, uh, I don't know, it was probably seconds. And, uh, then I got a bid, and it was, Spaghetti bolognese and champagne at sunset by the trash fans. I was like, sold! Yes! And it was to this amazing looking guy who I'd kind of got talking to in the line actually. Um, so, like, it's like, Arr! so this slave had his master. So Hector picked me up from camp and uh, yeah, we went to his camp, picked up some spaghetti and some bolognese and some champagne, a little picnic basket, and uh, hopped on our bikes and made our way to the trash fence, which is uh, the furthest you can actually go and still be on plier. Um, so we made our way through all the different art pieces, which was really cool. Um, got to know each other while we were on the bikes. And um, wow, it's quite a ride. It's like a 30 or 40 minute ride. It's really far out. And um, get all the way out there, and um, it's approaching sunset, and uh, it was beautiful out there, absolutely beautiful. And um, we drank most of one bottle of champagne, and uh, well, we weren't hungry for spaghetti bolognese. If you get my drift, the mood was right, and uh, yes, we had great um, spaghetti. So, guys, thanks for watching again. We were on my second. Uh, episode of my Burning Man week. Uh, hope you're enjoying it. It's getting a little uh, blue. Um, and we'll continue to do so. So, Mum, stop watching. Don't watch these episodes, please. Uh, but share them, please do. 
And uh, yeah, um, I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, please subscribe. Please like um, Down Under and South of the Border on Facebook. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye.